Time for another board game review, and this time we have the game Crypt. This was sent to me by R2Y Games, and is designed by Andrew Nerger and Jeffrey Chin. The king is dead. His last wish was to be laid to rest with his prized possessions. The same family heirlooms he had bequeathed to you and his other children. Now you break into the royal crypt to reclaim what is rightfully yours. Crypt is a fast-paced set collection game with a unique dice placement mechanic. Let me show you how to play. So in Crypt, you are trying to get treasure. Uh, whoever has the most coins at the end of the game wins. Now, each player has servant dice, um, three of them to be exact. And there are six types of treasure of different colors you can collect. Now you reveal, uh, depending on the number of players, a certain number of face-up cards and face-down cards. You also have six collector cards. We'll go into those in a second. Uh, one of you starts with a leader card, and the last player starts with a lights out card, which means they can only place servants on one treasure card. So, on your turn, you have one of the following actions you can do. You can either claim treasure cards or recover your exhausted servants. We'll get into exhausted servants later. Claiming, you choose any value of your die to designate the servant's effort. The higher the value, the more likely they will um, win a prize. However, the more likely they will become exhausted later. You can also place multiple servants on the same card if they have the same effort value. So for example, I could put uh, two threes, because they're the same value, on this treasure, and I could put a four here. The next player has the option um, to, uh, if they place dice with a higher total effort value, to push dice off. So let's say, for example, this is a total of six. I place, let's say, two fours. If I place two fours here, I push off the blue player's dice. Those dice then just return to that owner. Now let's say the next player does, let's say, a five here, and, um, you know, two threes here. And then the last player, uh, since they can only go on one card, they go, mm, okay, I'm just gonna push this one off. Now, once all the, um, if there are any unclaimed treasure cards, those just get returned to the box. And then you roll the servant dice that are on these treasure cards. So you, you, you get whatever card your dice is on, but then you roll the value. And if it's higher or equal to what the effort value was, it's fine. However, for this player, they roll a four. It was a six, they roll a four. This dice becomes exhausted and it goes into the crypt. You still get the card, but that servant is exhausted. And you do the same thing. These are threes. Uh, in this case, oh, I rolled exactly the same thing. So uh, both of them are fine. And um, if I roll these, this one is less than four, so it's exhausted, but this one is fine. So to get these dice back, you have to spend an action on your turn, next turn if you want to get your exhausted dice back to your hand. Um, or uh, if all your placed servants were pushed out during a round, you recover your exhausted servants uh, to your player card. And that's pretty much how that works. Um, on a future turn, you can reclaim these. Um, but you're either deciding to, where to place card or place dice or push other people's dice off or return your servants. Now let's go into some of the uh, special effects. Uh, there are two sides for each. I'm not going to go through all of them, but one, for example, for the pottery collector, um, if you collect uh, two red treasures, uh, you score uh, two extra coins. Uh, if you have three red treasures, that's four bonus coins, and if you get four red treasures, that's eight coins. Whenever you collect treasures, you place them face down uh, in front of you, and but people can still see what color they are. If you win one of the face down ones, you can still look at the card, but you don't have to show anybody. Some of the ones, some of them have flip abilities, like this one, the idol collector, which says re-roll the die. What that means is if I have a yellow treasure face down in front of me, I can choose to flip it up face up and trigger the power. So during the collect phase, you know, when I rolled my dice to see if they are exhausted or not, I could be like, mm, I'm gonna spend one yellow card face up to re-roll this. Uh, in this case, it would have paid off if they started with three. Um, the green one is, just as a, is a similar one. If you flip over two green treasures, uh, you get to recover one of your die. Um, the blue card score your highest value blue treasure twice if you have at least two. 
if you have the most coins on purple treasures at the end, you get five bonus coins. And this one, if you have uh, two or more manus black, uh, black manuscripts, they are each worth four points. At the end of the game, uh, you score all the treasures you have in front of you uh, based on their bonuses and their values on the cards themselves. You also get a coin for each tre uh, dice you have that is unexhausted. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Otherwise, uh, you just go through rounds, reveal the cards, place your dice, push people off, and continue and just start collecting sets. Uh, and that's pretty much the game. This game was okay. The main problem is it reminds me of a game that I like way more uh, called Vegas Dice Game, which is a great game. They're not exactly the same, but they both have similar mechanics of like kind of outbidding dice on like cards. Uh, they're a little different, but I do like that, you know, it's a fun set collecting game. You're collecting certain colors. Those give you specific bonuses or abilities. And, you know, tempting you to be aggressive and make sure you, you know, bid high on certain colors because you want to get those abilities and block your opponents from, you know, getting theirs. Um, the concept of having the servants use high effort, you know, a high value to get cards, but that means they're more likely to get exhausted, is clever. Like, you know, it's just like a nice little risk management game. The whole claiming cards though, like pushing dice off, I think has been done better in other games. It gets kind of repetitive. I kind of like in a game like Vegas Dice Game, you roll the dice and you have to choose based off what you have. But in this game, you can choose what the dice are. So, I don't know, it, it gets monotonous. Um, and then a lot of it at the end, once after once it's all said and done, is just based on how lucky you are with rolling your dice in the collect collecting phase and, oh, do they happen to be exhausted? No? Great. That's kind of it. It's a super light game. I appreciate it's a small package, not that hard to learn, easily portable. And there are some decent little ideas, but ultimately it wasn't super engrossing for me. And it really kind of lacks that sort of tension and, you know, the fun of really aggressive blocking other people in Vegas Dice game and other similar games. It's okay, but I think it, this concept has been done better.